I'm going to be very, very clear and plain to you. I cannot stand, absolutely cannot stand this Kathy Newman. She is useless as a presenter. Useless. I don't enjoy, I mean, I don't watch her uh, at all. I've seen her in person when I've, in the past when I used to flick through channels to watch, you know, two or three years ago or whatever, to go to another channel um, when it's near the news time. Don't stay to watch her. Don't like her at all. Channel 4 used to have the greats, the real greats. Peter Sissons, Jon Snow. And now they seem to be promoting this horrible hag as their sort of next big white hope on Channel 4. This woman is, says she reveals school sexual harassment. Let's move on so we don't have to see her ugly mug. Channel 4 news presenter, Kathy Newman, has spoken out about being sexually harassed by teenage boys at the private school sixth form she attended. At the private school sixth form she attended. That's wrong, isn't it? Isn't that the, the, the private sixth form? school anyway she told the sunday times how one pupil unzipped his flies and forced her forced her to touch his penis leaving her feeling humiliated and embarrassed she shared her experience as part of an anti-bullying drive These things went on. Um, so, I mean, when I was in school, I mean, there were boys used to go into girl, the girls, you know, um, toilets, and they would be screaming, and the guy would run out of the toilet. And then one day, a girl came into the boys' toilets when they were having their wee, and she went and looked at their their dicks, and, and then ran out. Which a black girl, which is typical. And there was great hilarity. The girls were laughing, you know, as we came out of the toilet. Because she'd gone in, sit, looked at us having a pee. And then when we were coming out, these girls were laughing at us. So they, they, they got their own back. You see, they got their own back. I think the girls that, are, they had big, they had backbone. The girls, these women today, don't seem to have any backbone. If boys did something that was embarrassing to the girls, they the girls did something embarrassing back to the boys. I think there was one incident where some of the girls had gone into the boys' toilets and put cling film on the um, um, because it was done to them. The some of the boys had gone into the girls' toilets and put cling film over the toilet seat under the toilet seat so the girls a few weeks later when it was all forgotten they went and did the same and it caught out <laughs> one of the young lads so it was tit for tat it was a it was there was a you know these things happen and children will do these things but the question has to be asked couldn't she have turned and run away Where was this done? You see, there's no point in saying to him how one pupil unzipped his flies and forced her to touch his penis, leaving her feeling humiliated and embarrassed. It's like that, um, oh, I can't, that is it Louis C.K. or C.K. Lewis, where he said that um, two women, had, uh, they'd gone back to the hotel and there was, he was with there with two women. They had a few to drink. And he suddenly said to them, which was, you know, it was creepy, said, oh, do you mind if I masturbate in front of you? But these two women. He took his trousers down, 
and started to masturbate in front of these two women until he came on his stomach. And once he finished, these two then women got up and left. The question has to be asked, why did the women not say no? It's unacceptable for you to do that. Why are you, what, why are you, why are you doing that? You need help. You're obviously not very well. Why are you asking two ladies to do that? It's, it's disgusting. You know, and they should have got up and walked out and left him in the room. There was two of them. They went on their own, but they stayed. Why? The same thing happens here. Why did she? T why didn't she turn and run? Why didn't she say, "Oh, you disgusting animal! You're a pig! You're mentally ill! You're filthy! You're disgusting!" Why didn't she turn and run? So now she's come up with this, and she said here, "It was completely unexpected. I just shrieked." in a fairly comical way, laughed at myself to get over the humiliation of it. But afterwards, I felt very, really embarrassed, she told the Sunday Times. Of course, nobody's saying that what he did was right. I'm not saying that he would think it's right. What I'm saying is, she should have run away from him, screaming, looked for a teacher and tell, tell the teacher that she, he, you know, this young man had sexually exposed himself to her. But she didn't do that. Instead, she now opens it up to the world. We should have been left in private. This is something that happened in sixth form school. Okay. These these guys are under the age of 18. So we class them as children still. So a 17-year-old is still classed as a child. A 16-year-old is still classed as a child, not as an adult. Yes, they can get married. But generally, you know, if you look at 16-year-old children, at people outside, you can tell they're very, there's a certain amount of childless. They can look after themselves, to the degree, but they're still, we, they're still under our care up until the age of 18. So this is, should have been left in the, you know, this was children with children, okay? This, isn't, this wasn't an adult with children. And I think that's really, really unfair for her to come out with this. Because now... Apparently, um, I mean, she's come out with something saying, uh, speaking in, 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 let's, sorry, let's go, let's carry on with this and then we'll get to this. Yeah. Uh, speaking in a video for the back to school campaign, she said she started being teased at her private sixth form where there were very few girls because she was a swat. I mean, you know, who cares? Who gives a shit? I mean, the fact that these young men were getting into sixth form and it was, a, you know, um, and they were there at sixth form school is an indication. And that she was one of the very few girls there. Um, for me, that gives uh, those young lads kudos. They, but... Uh, not to do what they did, but she's just making out, oh, she was a swat. I, I really don't like this woman. I think she's very, very nasty. I'm not a great fan of her at all. Um, being on a scholarship also marked her out as slightly different, she said. These are things that happened in those days. There were working class people, when they were, the grammar school uh, were quite prevalent back in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, you know. Uh, and in bef before the war. Uh, in fact, the school that I went to in the north used to be a grammar school and got converted into a comprehensive school. It was a boys' school, and then it became co-ed. Co um, but, you know, these things were going on. People were... It's like during the war, World War I, World War I and World War II. The captains had never had real experience of working class people other than as servants. But when they were in the trenches, 
and they were, the bullets were flying, the bombs were flying. They were all in the same place. And many of them, you know, captains struck up friendships, you know, um, with the working class soldier and realised they were the same. There was very little difference between them other than one was a lot poorer than the other. And the same thing with World War Two. World War Two broke down a lot of um, class barriers that had existed um, before them. You know, the captains were having to go back in the days when, you know, the 17th, 18th centuries, when the captains used to sit up on the hill, the officers sit up on the hill, watching down on the battle in the middle of the, the field, because that's where the battle occurred. World War Two and World War One were done with far bigger machines. They were done in, across countries. And so the captains couldn't always hide away. They had to be part of the, the fighting. There may have been a few bunkers for the, the lieutenants to hide away and um, so-called make plans. But the captains were with the men. And these captains and officers were well-educated men who saw, you know, suddenly what hardship was really like. Things change and evolve over time. I bet you if you go to schools today, you will see boys and girls chasing each other all the time. Okay. And I'm sure that some of the girls will be slight sexually bullied. Yes, we know that. But it's part of... Someone said, what makes you stronger in life will get you through life there are things you know what doesn't kill you will make you stronger life isn't perfect i'm afraid ladies and gentlemen there are things that go on in everyday life that if we are prepared for we can survive But I'm just curious on why, as a 16-year-old girl, she didn't report this. Because she should have reported this to the head teacher. She should have reported this to say, this is what this young man had done. He had, you know, he brought his penis out. And, and, and at least he would have been brought up to the headmaster. She should have informed her parents what had happened but why she did she not do that why didn't she inform her parents at least if she didn't want to inform them, and let the parents bring this into school it's a case of oh suffering in, in silence yes you're right there is a certain amount of that but um it is what it is She recalled how if girls wore a white t-shirt, boys would spray them with a fire hose so they could see their underwear. I mean, really? This happened every single time a girl would wear a t-shirt. I, I just don't understand this. This never happened in my school. It never happened in any schools that I went to where girls were harassed in this in this manner. If anything, boys did harass girls, girls harassed boys. I saw girls grabbing guys by the nuts every so often, chasing the boys down the corridor. There was they seemed to be a good laugh. Girls pinching boys' butt bums in the corridor. I got mine pitched a few times when I was walking down the corridor if I was passing some girls. I can remember I, I was walking down the corridor and, and Three girls came around the corner who I had a little bit of an encounter with, that kind of thing. And I turned and ran the other way and they came chasing after me. You know, and I avoided them as best they could until the next time. But they, they took great, they took great joy after, you know, of chasing after me. And other guys as well. 
maybe the girls, the schools that I went to, the girls had bigger balls than perhaps some of these uh, girls to, today, or tougher than some of these girls today. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying uh, bullying is a good thing. It's not a good thing. I used to defend people when I was younger against bullies. Uh, I'm talking, you know, guys who would literally be knocked to the ground by, uh, uh, you know, other two or three people chasing and knock him to the ground. I would be there to defend him and stand over him and, you know, stand between that person and say, right, you want to you have a fight with someone? Here I am. Let's, let's get on with it. She said now she would describe some of her experiences as sexual harassment, but did not report them at the time. Should have reported them at the time. And they, then they would have been dealt with at the time. I think I personally really hate this. When you are now bringing all this nonsense out. Um, because, again, you were at school. Things that happen at school. I'm not saying they can't report about them. But people's experiences will come out. Ordinary people's experiences will come out. Okay. She's a famous person who... The school that she went to, which is identified, now will investigate this and will look for this particular young man who is in his 30s or probably getting into his 40s now, who has com perhaps completely changed from that time. Or maybe not. I don't know. Could be in prison. We don't know. These things were done when we were very, very, when people were very young. And now he's got, possibly could have his life damaged. And I'm, I don't want to be put a mocker on it, but maybe this guy could probably, maybe this guy would probably be feeling massive guilt now and do something we don't want to happen. Or is that what she wants? Does she want a guy to, does she want this guy to, to do what I think would happen? It depends on his strength, mental state of mind. What happened to her? I don't have any sympathy for her because she could have run away. You didn't need to touch his penis. Unless, unless he had you by the throat or, or had a knife at your throat, which doesn't sound like he did. You could have run away, but you didn't. You stood there and he probably said to you, go on, go on, touch it, go on, touch it. And you did. That's the force that you're talking about when you could have just walked away or you could have just run away. If she, if she was held down or if she was being, you know, literally forced to be held, then fine, I understand. But it doesn't sound like she didn't say that she was being held, forced to be held. She could have walked away or run away at any time and reported this guy to the school. This is a school matter. And he would have been punished in school. Charterhouse told the Sunday Times it had not been aware of Miss Newman's serious allegations. Exactly, because she didn't tell them. And had now reported them to the police. So this man is probably going to get a knock on his door for something that happened when he was 17, 16, years of age and he's now going to probably have his life ruined because this insensitive this insensitive silly bitch is 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 now reported uh, this is you know i my personal view is this i'm going to make this statement i would love to see boys only schools all the way up to the 18, uh, age of 18, and girls only schools, all the way up to the age of 18. I really, really would, would love to see that. Because then we wouldn't he be hearing this nonsense from this hag, you know. I think b boys and girls need to be separated at school. It worked fairly well back in the past, with no problem at all. 
We need to see it done now. I think we need to see these these things happen, especially especially in, in these times when women can accuse men of of sexual uh, misdoings, where there is no um, you know information. It's her word against it. But because she's famous, she's coming out with these allegations. This is another situation where the Me Too movement has spawned nonsense. You know, my view of the Me Too movement is, is just a load of shite. Because many of those women were complicit to what went on, happened to them. Okay. I mean, um, Pamela Anderson alluded to that big time. Okay, she alluded it to her big time. You know, one of the things that people got to understand, whether we like it or not, sex is the most powerful drug. Well, not just not a drug, but the most powerful. Um, how can I put it? Thing that people do, men and women do. It's it, it, and for men, young men especially. It, it's really, really um, something that when you're very young, and you know, under the age, and you've not had, you know, you've not had any sexual experience. For many young men, it, it, their hormones are raging. They really want to have a sexual relationship, and you know, it's not the same. I mean, two thousand years ago, boys and girls had relationships. Obviously, they had to be careful about pregnancies. Um. Now everything's much more controlled, so it's not so easy for uh, for men or and children, you know, young men to have sex. Like they, uh, these are the things that the, this is what they did back in the, you know. I mean, look, they talk about Muhammad um, marrying a, a, the young girl. She was six years old, nine years old. I think Mary was very young. Um, when Joseph, I think Joseph wasn't a young man. I think he was in, was he in his fifties? And Mary was fourteen years of age. So you know you could, but these things happened back in those days. They don't occur today. Or very certainly not in the West. It happens in the Middle East, but not in the, but certainly not so much in the West. I, I I'm sorry, I have no sympathy for her. She should have reported this at the time. To bring this out now. Um, for what reason? You know, the school's been identified. The school now now is going to re send, get, report this to the police. Um, the police are going to do investigation of literally all the male students that were in her class. They're going to interview her, and she's going to implicate this guy. He will. It will come out. Something that was he thought was innocent. It was silly. It was stupid. Shouldn't have occurred. But now it could probably, I personally think, cost him his life. We already have enough issues with um, um, you know male suicide occurring in society. 80, over 80% 80 of male suicides occur compared to 20% of female. Strange. Domestic violence. I always used to think it was literally 99% of men committed domestic violence. And then I saw a survey many um, only a couple of years ago that 39% of domestic violence in Australia are by women to men. We get all these myths that men are the perpetrators, perpetrators of, of violence consistently, you know. But you need to look into the story deeper. Why did you touch his penis? Just because he said, if someone said to you, oh, go up to that building and jump off that building, you would do it. Of course, you bloody wouldn't do it. You, you, you'd walk away from that person if you can get away from them. Unless they're holding you by cuffs. If he had her by, the, by her arm and she couldn't run away, she couldn't get away, 
then f understandable. But it doesn't sound like that to me. She said he forced him from me by his voice. And why did you touch it? Because it sounds like you were curious and you touched it and then you ran off squealing. It's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. I don't know, maybe she wanted to get this out first before. I mean, the, why would a young man come or a guy come out today and say, oh, I took my dick out and showed, uh, you know, showed it to Kathy Newman and she touched it and she ran off squealing. Would anybody really do that? I don't know. Maybe. If they want, I mean, but I just think it's very, very curious. I really do. Very, very curious. Don't get me wrong. It's not, it's not nice. But these are things that happen in life. You're, you're a young person. It, so what? It, you, you deal with it. Move on. As far as I'm concerned, you've dealt with it. Move on. Um, there's more. The, 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 the outcome of this is going to, this guy, there's going to be someone arrested. Someone's going to be arrested. You know. I'm not saying that's. I mean, this is harassment. This is bullying. But this is what kids do in school a lot of the time. But I think what we need to do is girls are very sensitive. And I think we need to separate girls and boys. And girls and boys should only meet them at university or when they leave school and go into the workplace. That's it. Finish. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, I don't think that men and women... I think the workplace as well should separate men and women as, as much as we possibly can. I think women should work on I don't know, the first floor or ground floor. Uh, men should work on the first floor, where, wherever possible, you know, just separate the floors. And then the second floor, women. So there's women's toilets on that floor only, no men's toilets, and then and so on and so on. So you go through, you know, a building where it's separated, you know, because men and women, I think, work far better that way than they, they do. The, the situation is showing today that, um, as Jordan Peterson said, that this has only been going on for a short period of time where men and women have truly worked together in the workplace um, for the last just 40 or 50 years. You know? um, and the thing, that, the thing is that women, these women that are complaining about issues with, 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 this, with men and all that kind of business, they're working in, in, in very nice, cosy environments. But they're not working in the dirty, vile, stink environments like the, the sewer system. They're not working at the real high power stations that could literally fry a man to dust. Um, you know, if they touch something that's very, very dangerous. We don't see women in these places. We don't see them. We need to see women in the more dangerous jobs. We need to see women in the STEMs, um, uh, get women into the STEMs but without having to pay them more money, um, pay them the same as the guys, because it's supposed to be equal, rather than, so, oh, we've got to give them an incentive to come into STEM subjects, where they will come in for a couple of years and then suddenly drop it, or three or four years, and then drop it and go and do, go and do sociology uh, again, and all this kind of nonsense. No, I'm sorry, um, I have no sympathy for this dim-witted, Mrs. Uh, Newman, um, she got, yeah, you know, she, she got her come up in, uh, when Peterson tore her to pieces. Um, she, 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 I just can't stand her face. Just, just can't stand looking at her. But um, there you go. Um, it is what it is. Um, so, look, people, can you do us a favour? Uh, if anyone's watching this, can you sub could please subscribe to my channel and um, spread this my videos around a bit um, so I can get a few more subscribers? 
So if you can subscribe to my channel, um, I'll be um, truly grateful. So yeah, please please uh, click on the subscribe. I don't know where that where that is it. No, yeah, I mean somewhere on YouTube you should be able to subscribe to my channel. Um, please do it if you can. Thanks very much for listening.